Um, after this, we're going to do something called Vesper, and then the unit is done. Um, nomenclature is something that you need to know all year long, and when you see it, um, you're normally going to have all of the elements just, or all the, the different type of nomenclature, all just put together and mixed up. So when we look at our nomenclature, you really have to look at your first element. And when you look at your first element, you need to figure out, is it a representative means that you have an acid? Um, so if you have hydrogen in the first place, um, that means that you need to follow your acid rules. And then if you have a nonmetal, which means that you have something on the um, right-hand side of the periodic table over here. So when you look at your first element, that's going to determine what rule that you need to use to name your um, compound. So if you have a representative element, all you do is you name the cation, name the anion, there's nothing special that you need to do. Transition metal are going to get Roman numerals. Um, that's because they don't have the same oxidation number all the time. So when you use those Roman numerals, you're going to tell the charge of that metal. If you have hydrogen first, you use the acid rules. And I kind of had to move this down here to the bottom because I ran out of room. So you're going to have hydrogen paired up with an anion that ends in ide, eight, or ite. If you have ide, that's hydroic. Eight is ick, ite is us. I ate something icky, sprite is delicious. And then finally, if you have a non-metal in your first spot, those are the ones that you use prefixes, and that's the only time you use prefixes. If you have a metal or a polyatomic ion, you're not going to use any prefixes at all. The prefixes tell how many are there. And then if you have Brinkelhoff, B-R-I-N-C-L-H-O-F, they're just named like the element themselves. Remember, those are diatomic, so you'd have a 2 in the formula. So I have some practice problems here. For my first practice problem up here at the top, I have COO. CO is cobalt. Cobalt is a transition metal. So with cobalt in the transition metal, I have to use Roman numerals to tell the charge of the metal itself. So CO we just said is cobalt. We're going to use Roman numerals to tell the charge. And then O is oxide. Now to figure out the charge of my oxygen, I'm going to use the periodic table. That's going to tell me the charge of my cobalt because there's one of each one. So no matter what, whatever the charge of oxygen is, you're going to have the same charge for cobalt. So when we find oxygen on the periodic table, oxygen has a negative 2 charge. So if oxygen is negative 2, cobalt's plus 2, so you're going to have cobalt 2 oxide for your answer here. The next one is HBr. H is hydrogen which means that we're going to follow our acid naming rules. Hydrogen is paired up with bromide. So with hydrogen pairing up with bromide, I'm going to use hydroic. So hydro, instead of bromide, it's bromic. And then acid. So hydrobromic acid. The next one is I2. I only have iodine there. It's not paired up with anything else. Iodine is a member of Brinkelhoff. So whenever you write iodine, like I2, because it's in Brinkelhoff, it's just named as the element. No prefixes or anything like that. It's just iodine. Rb2SO4. Rubidium on the periodic table is a representative element. So with my representative element, all that I do is I just name it rubidium. And then SO4, that's a polyatomic ion, that's called sulfate. So even though there's no parentheses around it, there's only one of them, so technically it doesn't get parentheses, but you could write it like that as well. PCL5. P is phosphorus. It's a nonmetal. Chlorine is a nonmetal, so I'm going to use my prefixes to tell how many are present. This is a covalent compound. I have one phosphorus. Now, if I had two, I would put diphosphorus, but we can't put bono on the first element. And then 5Cl, so penta chloride. First element stays the same, second one ends in IBE. The next one starts with H. 
that H means that I follow my acid naming rules. ClO3 is chlorate. So instead of having chlorate, I'm going to put chloric and then acid. Remember the H means that you have an acid. SRO. SR is strontinum. It's right here. So it's a representative element. So all that I do is I just write down strontinum. And then it's paired up with oxygen, which is oxide. So when you're naming, like I said, really look at the first element. And when you look at the first element, that's going to help you to determine what to do. Now on these ones on the bottom down here, on this one I have chromium 2 iodide. I have Roman numerals. Right away that tells me the charge of my chromium. That means that chromium has a plus 2 charge. Iodide is iodine with a negative 1. So when I swap and drop, you end up with CRI2. Barium nitrate, A-T-E. Barium is B-A. Barium lives in group number 2, so it has a plus 2 oxidation number. Nitrate, you're going to have to look it up or just know it, is NO3 minus 1. So when I go to swap and drop here, you end up with BANO32. Calcium bromide. Calcium lives above calcium up here. Calcium has a plus 2 oxidation number. Bromide is bromine. Bromine's a halogen, which means it has a negative 1 oxidation number. It lives in group 17. So when I swap and drop here, you end up B C A B R two. Now the next one says carbonic acid. This word acid means that I have hydrogen ions present. So that's hydrogen with a plus 1. Carbonic. There's no hydro at the beginning of that, so it's not carbonide or carbide is what it's actually called. Um, ick is ate. I ate something icky. So carbonate is a polyatomic ion. You'd have to look it up or just know it. It's CO3 negative 2. So when we swap and drop here, it's H2CO3. Disulfur triiodide. Hey, on this one, disulfur, I see my prefixes. When I see prefixes, that just tells me how many of each of the different elements are present. So you have S, 2, and then triiodide, that's 3 iodine. So I have 2, sulfur, 3, iodine. Fluorine doesn't have anything with it. So it's just an element. When you have just an element written down, you need to figure out, is that fluorine in Brinkelhoff? And in fact, when you look at Brinkelhoff, it ends with F. So that's your fluorine. So when we write our formula here, it's just F2. Because it's in Brinkelhoff, it's a diatomic element, it gets a 2. Now the next one says hydrofluoric acid. Hydro does not mean hydrogen. Acid means hydrogen. Hydroic means that this used to be ide. So we have fluoride paired up with hydrogen. Fluoride is F. It's a halogen. It lives in group 17, so it has a negative 1 oxidation number. So when I swap and drop, it's H, F. And then finally, down here at the bottom, I have sodium nitride. Sodium is a representative element. It lives in group number 1 on the periodic table, so it has a plus 1 oxidation number. So Na plus 1. Nitride is nitrogen. On the periodic table, nitrogen has a negative 3 oxidation number. So we have N minus 3. So when I swap and drop here, you end up with Na3N. So I hope that that's helpful for today's assignment. Um, you're actually going to do very similar to what I have here, where you're going to have formulas all mixed up, and you're going to have to um, write the name. Or I'm going to give you the name, and you have to give the correct formula based off of um, what I have. So I'm going to put this chart on the screen, and hopefully this is helpful to you. So if you need to make something similar to this, you can um, write it down on your own. Um, whatever you need to do there, I just, you know, let me straighten it out, sorry. Um, 
so I don't know if that's helpful or not, but if you want to screenshot that, maybe that might be helpful when you're going to do your um, nomenclature. And then we use something similar to this on the board when we're here in class. So if you're here in class, this is actually on the board right behind me. Hope you guys have a good day. If you have any questions, be sure that you ask.